Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Wednesday, the 10th of April. It's match day, or we hope it's going to be match day, up at Dens Park. There will be a pitch inspection at 11 a.m., so we should get a clearer idea as to whether we've got a game on tonight or not. But to look ahead to the game and Philip Clement's comments yesterday, Chris Jack joins me. How are we doing, Chris? Morning, Derek. It's either going to be a, a, a day with a match and hopefully three points, or it's going to be a day trying to get the inside story of another um, Premiership shamble. So uh, it's going to be a busy one. It's going to be a busy one either way, but hopefully it's the yeah, hopefully it's the first option. And by well, about 12 hours' time, Rangers will be heading back to the top of the Premiership, hopefully. Yep, yeah, uh, let's hope you're not in, going to encounter another wasty trip up to uh, Dundee. Uh, if you do so, uh, I'm sure there's a few tourist attractions you can uh, frequent uh, if you do make your way up there, Chris, this time. But uh, yeah, that uh, pitch inspection at 11, uh, and I know that many Rangers fans travel from far-flung places to follow the team. Uh, Philip Clement wanted a decision yesterday on whether the game would go ahead, but um, we will get that decision. Well, we should get that decision at 11 a.m. I know at the weekend when Motherwell headed up there, we had a, a pitch inspection in the morning and another one at, at one o'clock. I think there was two or three pitch inspections all in uh, and it was a late call, but the, the game went ahead. So, uh, yeah, let's hope that the game goes ahead this evening. But uh, you will be the first to know, folks. Keep your eyes peeled on our social media channels uh, and the website YouTube for all the latest with regards to that. Um, right, uh, let's, uh, where should we start? Uh, we'll start with Phil, Phil Clement because, uh, of course, as well as his uh, press conference yesterday, which was uh, very interesting, uh, those of you that are, are members on the YouTube channel, go check out the, the press conference reaction video, uh, or you can watch his press conference in full over on the YouTube channel. But there is a, an embargo section as well afterwards, uh, and you may have seen uh, a couple of stories that emerged uh, late last night on the Rangers Review site, and uh, he talked about a number of things. First of all, Fabio Silva, and uh, about his... Uh, uh, but claims that he's a diver uh, by uh, Chris Sutton, of course, was uh, going off his nut uh, about Fabio Silva, shock horror uh, at the weekend. Uh, but on him, the Clement says, uh, there were two actions which I was not happy with him about, and I show him today also about that. Uh, he should have been stronger in the duel, and he was not strong enough. And in other moments, he got really kicked. Uh, he also got uh, two really deep marks in his calves after the game, cuts from the studs. Uh, there were a few actions where he could go down because there were uh, a severe tackle or a duel, uh, and uh, two where they were not. And I've talked to him about that. So don't start to create now. And this is what people on the other side try to do, a sort of narrative around him because he's not been doing that in other games. He was, in the beginning, an emotional young guy. Yes, he's 21, but it's getting better and better. He has two actions that I was not happy with him. I spoke to him about it, so it will not happen in the future. For him, it was also his first old firm. It's the first time in this situation. So those are normal things. He'll be stronger out of this. We had a really good talk. I showed him the images. He understands this is, again, an evolution for him as a player and as a person also to become stronger. Those are interesting lessons. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's what he had to say on uh, Fabio Silva. Um, he's right. Uh, uh, I know that it, it, you don't want to see any Rangers player uh, rolling about like that, Chris, but um, I think uh, Clement is, is right in what he says about uh, Fabio Silva there. Didn't dive, he just made the most uh, of uh, those incidents in the first half. Second half, uh, I know he was booked for diving by uh, John Beaton, but he corrected the decision uh, and it was a clear as the penalty, despite what uh, other uh, people seem to think they've got this warped view that uh, you're allowed to uh, challenge people uh, on the thigh and the knee area and it's not a penalty, but there you go. Um, what do you make his comments on Fabio Silva? I thought he handled it well. Um, after, as you say, after the uh, broadcast press was finished, um, the manager then speaks to the on newspaper. So as I'm getting my stuff packed up and we're putting the stuff on, on YouTube um, and doing some of the social media stuff, I always just sit in the, in the media room and listen to what the manager's um, been saying uh, to the uh, newspaper guy. So uh, I had an idea that these these lines were coming and this, this story is also coming uh, late last night. Um, I think he's quite right to come out and uh, defend his player. I think he was always going to some of the some of the narrative that's built around Silva over the last couple of days has, has been a nonsense. As you say, the, the penalty was a penalty all day long. I can't believe we're now another day on and social media is still full of people saying it wasn't this, he's dies and buying into 
conspiracy theories and all the rest of it, it yeah. was a penalty. <laughs> so whatever your view on Fabio Silva for the the incident when he gets caught in the face and then goes and then goes down, that that's a very separate issue. You can't not give someone a penalty because earlier on in the game he's been guilty of a, a bit of a a bit of an overreaction that, that as you say, rolling around the floor like that. It's not what you want to see. It was embarrassing, and I'm sure the manager will have had a fairly a fairly stern word about it. I don't think that's the type of thing Clement wants to see from his from his side. But just because he's been guilty of that action doesn't mean to say that he's then guilty of simulation and the penalty when it's just a clear penalty. I say some of the some of the things I've been thrown at him online over the last couple of days have been way way over the top. I thought uh, Brendan Rogers' comments post match on Sunday were interesting as well, saying that the, the player simulates. Well, he didn't because he, yes, initially he got booked for it, but the referee then has another look at it through VAR through the proper channels. Yep, decides that no simulation has taken place. He awards the penalty. The yellow card for simulation is then rescinded. So Silva did not simulate in that um, in, in that instance or in that in that uh, phase of play. So Rogers saying that is then is then wrong. It also so much comment then stems <clears throat> then stems from that. So I think it's it was only right that the manager comes out to uh, to defend his players. That's not to say that Silva. Is perfect because, as we say, the incident earlier on looked looked up looked bad for him. There's mm. there's no way you can roll about the floor like that. Um, it, it was there's, there's people just end up laughing at him rather than feeling sorry for him. And yeah. um, so that that type of thing has to be stamped out of his game. But there's two two separate incidents, um, and I'm sure the manager, I say, will have a of a strong word in, in his ear about that. Um, and he's still a young player. He's still a young guy. He's clearly, I think he's quite an emotional guy. He clearly puts a lot into his football, puts a lot into the game. Maybe get a wee bit caught up in the old firm atmosphere and sense of occasion. I'm sure he'll learn from it. And hopefully, we don't see that type of thing from him again. But to to throw labels at him, I think right now is is wrong. Um, and as as the manager hinted at and just lead the uh, lead the seeds, um, he's not not the one in Scottish football who's perhaps guilty of um, make, making the most of of certain situations. Yep. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, interesting points coming in just uh, oh, just off the back of that. Stephen Gillespie says, 100% penalty. Uh, used to be the boy who cried, Wolf got eaten. VR seems to stop that, he says. So I can understand why beating initially uh, thought was a dive. Um, however, it was good. That's why VR is in place to correct such decisions. So there you go. Uh, also, interestingly, the manager was speaking uh, about certain media pundits having a go at uh, Rangers. Now, uh, if you watched the game on Sky at the weekend, uh, Neil Lennon uh, said, uh, he said, I'm old school, I'm not one to celebrate a draw. Um, short memories, uh, these guys, of course, I remember them doing the, the aeroplane celebration at the end of the 5-5 the game when he was Hibs manager at Easter Road uh, back in the day. So uh, Clement says, uh, first, what happens with the team? We go behind after 22 seconds and you go 2-0 behind in an old firm. And it's more than 30 years since a team came back in that situation. You score an extra time with a very good goal. You cannot be happy with that. It would be a little bit weird. But I read a lot of comments. And there's a funny thing in this town. Everybody has coloured glasses for sure around the old firm. There are a lot of comments about everything, but I don't care what people with coloured glasses are saying. It is not important for me. Yet we are happy we could come back in that situation that we showed resilience and we scored an amazing goal at the end. But before the game, we wanted to win. Uh, and in the game, we wanted to win also. After the amazing goal, we were the team who created still a chance. We were not the team who were defending. We got a good chance still with uh, Serial at the end. So we we're going full for the three points. We can be happy after a well-deserved point. It could have been more but it was more about the reaction after going behind. Uh, again, Chris, it's this sort of full outrage. No, no uh, problem at all with uh, the, the team, how they uh, reacted at the full-time whistle uh, at Ibrox. I think it was actually good management from Philip Clement uh, as well to make the players feel good getting that uh, reception from uh, the fan base. It was a bit of a roller coaster of a game, but uh, again, spoke very well on certain comments from some quarters. It's also not the first time that Rangers have have had that lap of honour, if you want to call it. I don't know what else you would, uh, you would uh, label it as, but they do it fairly regularly and do it almost after every yeah. home game. So it's not a, a case of... What do really, teams do it? Exactly. It's, it's not a case of they've the, so caught up in the, 
and, and the comeback and the and, and the feel that they've won the game and the feel that it's a bigger thing than it is and they've thought, oh, we go and celebrate with the fans. They do it after every game. It's like an appreciation thing and the manager spoke about it um, a few weeks ago. He wants more fans to stay till the end of games so that appreciation can be shown both ways. And the fans then can then applaud the players for the efforts and hopefully the result and the players can then thank the fans for their hopeful uh, backing during the, uh, during the game. So it wasn't a case of Rangers thinking a draw is a brilliant result and that's why we're going to go and celebrate it and we're going to go and make make something of it. It's just a case of they've had, they've had a comeback that no one thought was, was possible at half time. Nobody thought we'd take a point from it. Stages of the second half, we thought we'd gone and win the game. So it, there was a there was a disappointment as well as the as well as being pleased at, at taking a point in the circumstances. People were still disappointed that Rangers only got a point from it because one, we wanted to win the game before it. We wanted to win the game during it. We thought we could win the game during it. Um, so it's not a case of oh, we've, we've snatched a point. This is brilliant. Let's go. Let's go and celebrate it again. It's people looking for something that's that's not there, um, and again, not n- n- no surprise that the manager has come out and addressed it, addressed it well, and not not even had to defend his, his actions because ultimately, the Rangers manager he can, he can do whatever he likes, um, and he can he can ask his ask his players to do whatever he likes. Um, so I, I don't think it's a, a case of defending them. I think it's maybe just a case of explaining it. Um, and as he said, it's a long, long time since. A team has come from that situation in an old firm game. Of course, the point mean mean a lot to Rangers on on the day, but it wasn't a case of hey, let's go and uh, look out fireworks and bottles of champagne. It was just a, it was appreciation rather than a celebration. Yeah, uh, I'm not seeing anyone. There may be some uh, from a Rangers uh, background who mm-hmm. was unhappy with that. So it's, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it's come from a certain quarters. Uh, we shouldn't pay too much attention to it. Um, right, big game tonight then, Chris. Let's hope that the game is on. Uh, the manager, of course, uh, with uh, in his broadcast uh, piece yesterday, confirmed that Ridvan will not be available for the game. Uh, Bonabaric uh, is uh, available for the game. He said that Kamal Roof and uh, Nico Raskin, who weren't in the match day squad, could be part of the squad, but they're facing a lot of competition at this moment in time for places. He also gave an update on Ryan Jack, Danilo, and Cortez. You asked them about. Uh, it would be a surprise to see all three before the end of the season. Ryan Jack's got a calf problem. They're trying to get to the bottom of it. Uh, whether we see him in the Rangers jersey again remains to be seen. Of course, he's one of a number of players out of contract in the summer. Uh, Blue-eyed boy with a point says that Ryan Jacks played his last match for Rangers, I suspect, should have ended his international career earlier. Um, so, yeah, it remains to be seen if we'll see him uh, again. Oscar Cortez and Danilo, the manager, said they'll be back in the last week of the season. Uh, whether they can feature at all remains to be seen. It also said that if Rangers are in the Scottish Cup final, they will have an opportunity <clears> of <throat> making the squad for that one. But just on Jack, we touched on it in the press conference reaction video yesterday. Chris, uh, you've got to worry for him that he's, we're going to see him again. I think the as we said yesterday afternoon on the on the member show, the manager didn't rule any of them out, but he didn't exactly rule all three of them in. Um, it's I think he was very careful with his very careful with his words, not trying to get people's hopes and ex- expectations up. I would be surprised if we see any of them again. I don't I don't think it's going to happen unless the the situation is such in the last day of the season we are there in a an okay place and you can maybe get half an hour out of them and you need that half an hour to go and to go and try and win the league. Um, I would be surprised. I don't think any of them are worth a are worth the risk. Certainly in terms of Danilo because we we're going to need him next season. He's going to be part of the squad next season. Cortez I think has impressed enough in in, in the appearances that we've seen to make people think well there's maybe a player there. It's maybe a deal worth a deal worth doing. Ryan Jack, I think people have all but, all but written him off, um, which is a shame because on his day, a very, very effective midfield player for Rangers, a great servant to the club, played in some big games, scored some big uh, scored some big goals as well, been at the club through some difficult times, had, had some really good times. Ultimately, it has to come down to how much football are you going to get out of him next next season. He's in the same category as, as Kamar Roof. You know, yeah. really fit, Fully on his game, a very important member of the squad. It's how regularly do those days come around, um, and I would be surprised if the manager thinks that it's worth a, uh, that he's worth another contract. Um, 
which is a shame because I think he does still have something to offer if he's fit. But the the that if has just become too big over the over the last few months again. Um, so I would be I would be surprised. I think it's probably time for if Ryan to move on. Um, and ho- hopefully, if he does, he can go somewhere else and go and play go and play regular football because at, at this level, certainly he's still got a lot to offer for for the right club in the right side. I think he can still be a very very good midfield player. It's just whether Rangers can afford to take the risk fitness wise, and I think they probably won't. Yeah, uh, Denzel uh, says sorry for Ryan Jack. He's been a fine servant to the club. However, we can't go on like this with players perpetually unavailable through injury. Hope he finds fitness and a new club. Right, let's get to our predicted teams. You can find those on the website, folks. Um, I'm prepared for a, a few pelters here, but here we go. Uh, I'll whack mine up uh, first. So this is uh, my Rangers mm-hmm. 11. If I'm in the, the shoes of Philip Clement today, uh, I've got uh, Butland in goal. You may see a few surprises in that team. Tavernier, I've got Leon Balligan coming in alongside John Suter with Borna on the left. Uh, Lundstrom and Diamandia was swivering over whether John Lundstrom should also uh, take a seat on the bench because it has uh, looked uh, a tad uh, leggy of late. Um, but I've got Diamandia and Lundstrom in there. Cantwell in front of those two in place are Tom Lawrence. Dujon Sterling on the right. Abdallah Sima on the left. Serial Dessers up top. Rabbi Matondo will come on at some point uh, in the game. Um, for me, the big one is uh, Connor Golson, Chris. We've touched on it a n- n- number of videos now off the back of Sunday. Uh, he's not in good form. Uh, it's not the sort of form that is deserving of a starting place for me in the Rangers 11. Now, I understand it would be a massive call from the manager to drop someone who has been an ever-present, pretty much sparring injury in that Rangers back line ever since he joined from Brighton all those years ago. But uh, I think we've seen uh, when he was uh, hauled off in stoppage time on Sunday. Manager not afraid to make uh, big calls uh, in game. Uh, can we expect Leon Balligan coming in tonight? I think that's one of the really interesting decisions that the manager's got to the manager's got to make. Um, we'll come on to my side in a second. I've, I've gone for Goldson just because I think it would be that big a that big a call to to drop him to such an established member of the of the side. Such a big voice in the in the squad in the, in the dressing room. Now that doesn't mean to say that he is immune from criticism. He has had his his fair share. I think over the last few weeks he's deserved it because I think we all know his uh, his form has not has not been good. Said after the weekend, I thought it was way way off the off the level required at the at the weekend. Uh, but I think he does probably still have enough credit in the bank with with Clement, um to get that uh, to get a place tonight. Uh, but if, if Balligan does come in, you know exactly what you're going to get from him. Good solid operator, um, knows the knows the league, knows the standards, knows exactly what's required. And even in, in the, the later stages of his of his career, is still a very very good defender at this at this level. So if, if Balligan does come back in, um, I would have no no worries about it, no fears about it. Um, I think John Suter deserves to keep his place out of all the all the centre half options. I think Suter has really established himself. Um, that's not to say he's been perfect recently because there has been there have been mistakes in there as well. Um, but I think he's been he's been good overall. He deserves to keep his place, and it's just that really interesting call. Does the manager think well? Connor's form doesn't merit it, therefore he's going to come out, or does he think well? Connor's got enough as a credit in the bank. Let's go and give him a chance to try to try and play through it. Um, come come the summer, I think as I've said over the last couple of weeks, come the summer. There's a conversation to be had about Conor Goldson's place, not just within this side, but within the squad. Does the manager um, look to use his wages and use that place in, in, in the team? Does he look to utilise that in a different way? I think he might do. Um, but I think for the next couple of weeks, I would imagine he'll stick with him. I, I don't see him being the type who will say, almost not, not quite throwing him under the bus as such, but I, I just don't see him being a type who will take a, a big figure like that out of the team. I think he'll, he'll um, back him to uh, to play his way through it. So for me, it's, it's Goldson and Suter. Um, but if it is Leon, I say there's no uh, there's no um, anger or no disappointment on my part. Yeah, but Denzel says uh, surely Balligan at left centre-back, Derek. Yeah, I was just thinking that when I was looking at my team uh yeah, left or, or right, I just want those two at the heart of the defence set this evening. Uh, just on uh, dropping him, I think uh, Connor would be, uh, uh, I think he would accept the call if he was uh, dropped to the bench. I think he would uh, 
be uh, understanding of the situation. He'll know himself he's not playing anywhere near uh, the level that he, he, he's capable of. So, uh, But listen, uh, it would be a surprise if we've seen uh, Leon uh, in place of Connor Goldson tonight. Uh, I've seen a few comments saying no Rabi Matondo. Uh, yeah, I was delib deliberating over that one. I think as an impact sub, he really is doing the business. So again, and with that pitch at this moment in time, uh, I think I would be inclined to start uh, Matondo uh, in this coming off the bench in the second half, and uh, yeah, and Sterling on the right hand side. Sergio Dessers is up top because uh, there's no one else basically. He's the better option of him and Fabio Silva, uh, Kamar Roof. Whether he makes the squad uh, remains to be seen, but he's not going to be starting the game. Let's get Chris's team up. So a few uh, deviations of that's uh, mine again. I think uh, is that mine. Uh, I've done. I've put both of mine up there, so uh, let's just uh, fire that off just now. Um, how do we sort this out? There we go. Uh, I'll try and sort this out, Chris, but you've got Golton at the back uh, and you've got Matondo starting. I'm going to need to try and find what I sent you. I need to check my emails to see what I sent <laughs> last night. <laughs> uh, I've gone Butland, Tav, Golton, as we said, Suter, Barisic, uh, Lundstrom and Sterling as the, as the midfield two for me. And then Sima, Cantwell, Matondo and Dessers. Um, I think Cantwell has to get the nod over over Tom Lawrence. Um I could see the I could see the, the thinking behind Lawrence against Celtic, but it didn't work for me. Wasn't it wasn't influential enough in the game, wasn't affecting enough, enough in the game. So Cantwell comes back and takes that takes that ten spot. Seema and Matondo. There we go. It's a it's a fitness thing. It's not how how, how long can you get out of them? Can you if it's only going to be an hour? Tops, then I would say the, the first hour you go you go with your best side, you go on an attacking side, you go and try and win the game. Sterling over Dio Mandy was the was the big call for me. Just think that that pitch, you know what the middle of the park's gonna be like. If it's if it's on, it's not gonna be pretty. I think just think you want you want legs in there, you want a bit more um bit more strength, you want um uh, maybe a bit more running. Um and it's Unfortunately, it's not going to be a classic tonight. It's not going to be a night for for ball players. Um, no. It's not. It's not going to be a night for technical excellence. Unfortunately, that's why I've not got Fabio Silva in there. I don't think it's going to be a night for it's going to be a night for him. So I think Sterling and Lundstrom hopefully gives Rangers a bit more of a, a bit more of a solid foundation in the in the middle of the park in there. And you've then got I think there's, there's more than enough more than enough talent um, in that front four between Seema, Matondo, Cantwell, and Dessers to go and uh, to go and win the game. Um, and obviously Borna comes back in at, at left back for me. It's a it's a blow that uh, that Red Van's not um and he's not available, but the manager didn't seem too too perturbed by that situation. Days rather than weeks to say, doesn't it? Um I think we'll pro probably see him um for the uh, Ross County game. If not, after that, hopefully he's back up and he's back in. Um and he then for me is he's clearly the first choice in that in that area of the side. Um, so Sterling, I don't think he had a bad game at left back at the weekend. But I just prefer him in the in the midfield for this one. So therefore, Bonner comes back in at left back. Yep. Uh, so that's uh, our two teams, uh, folks. Let's get to some of the comments uh, that are coming in. Some uh, interesting points being raised. Uh, here's uh, Kenneth says uh, Balogun has start has played five minutes in three months. No, you can throw him in. Of course, if you remember back to the game back in November at Dens Park, he came in from nowhere and started that game. So, so I've got uh, no problem at all if uh, Leon Balogun gets a nod tonight. Uh, Bill Story with the point says, I thought Dowell, excluding the uh, across-the-box pass, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nearly had a heart attack when he played that hospital pass uh, on Sunday. I've got to say, you, you get taught that at primary school not to play balls like that, but uh, spot on, Bill. He says, uh, made a difference on Sunday. I think Dio has looked leggy, so maybe Den's uh, not ideal for him. Uh, he spoke uh, yesterday very well. I thought uh, Kieran Dell, Chris, I mean, it's no indication that Whoever's put up for the press is going to start the game, but uh, it's good to have him back available again. Uh, we did touch on this uh, yesterday in the, the uh, press conference reaction video. Uh, if we can get a tune out of him, I think it was a bit of a surprise seeing him coming back in uh, mm -hmm. in place of uh, Nico Raskin in that squad and actually coming on on Sunday. But I thought, uh, I mean, maybe culpable that, that, that third goal, I think Rangers were were sleeping after equalising through Abdallah Seema, but uh, I can I can see him playing a part tonight, whether that's uh, from the off or from the bench. I think we might see him. Hopefully, he's got a part to play, not just not just tonight, but over the yeah. over the next five, five six weeks of the season. Um, I think when he has played, it's clear to see that there's there's definitely something there. You can see he's a talented midfield player, offers something different. You can see why he was brought into the club. You can see why he has been highly rated. At various stages of his of his career, 
it's again it just comes down to to fitness rather than rather than form. It's been a very stop start season for him. It's not been the season that he would have he would have hoped for. Uh, now he could very much still end it on a on a real high. He could end up uh, leaving uh, on on his summer holidays with three medals tucked away in his pocket. Hello. And if he does if he does fair play to him and every member of the of the squad, um, I think he's got something to offer. Going forward, is again has, has he done enough to convince people that he should be part of the squad next season? Who knows? I think it, it depends what the manager sees from him in, in training. I think this is a big five six weeks for him. I, I said that to him in the, in the press conference yesterday about him coming back at a good stage of the season. He's back at the business end. He does have successes in his in his career. He's he's been a good championship level player uh, for a number of seasons. He. I thought he spoke really well about his, his injury troubles and coming back from it and that huge frustration in, in my manga because he, he came back, went into that camp thinking, go and have a big second half of the season and of course then picks up that like, almost yeah. a freak injury, it doesn't happen um, and I think it will be important for him these next few weeks to play as much as he can because he doesn't want to get that label of being another Kamar Ruth, being another Ryan Jack being another Phil Hollander, being another one of these guys who has got something who could be a starter, but just can't be relied upon. I think we can not, not give him a pass for not being available, but I think the certainly the Lamanga injury, it was one of these ones any player could have picked it up. So I don't think we can say he's, he's injury prone just on the back of that. He's maybe just a bit unlucky. If his luck can change, I think it does have something to offer the squad. Yep. Uh, right, that's, uh, there's a couple more comments I want to uh, tackle here. Marcus says, uh, morning guys, 11 a.m. or not, the team are already in Dundee. Yep, uh, they're in St. Andrews. I think they were staying uh, last night. So uh, that pitch inspection at 11 a.m., just checking the weather forecast. Heavy rain expected after 11 a.m. So I'm not sure that the timing is uh, uh, good with regards to the pitch inspection. We may get another one after 11 a.m. as we witnessed against uh, when we played Motherwell on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled on that, folks. Uh, Stephen Work with the point says, uh, Morning, Derek and Chris. If the game doesn't go ahead, what are the plans in place in terms of when it will take place? Thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, some scenarios. I know John Nelms was speaking to Sky yesterday and uh, he seemed to think that uh, next week, I think it was, uh, they might look to play the game on the 16th or the 17th. Um, I've seen some suggestions as well uh, that the game might be moved back 24 hours. Philip Clement not happy about uh, that decision, and that's why he wanted a, a concrete decision yesterday on, on whether the game will be played tonight or indeed moved. And I've seen another bonkers suggestion that the game should be played at a neutral venue behind closed doors. Now, the manager said that it, it wasn't uh, opposed to playing at a different venue, Chris, wouldn't be keen on having it behind closed doors. I don't understand why that should be uh, the case. No, I don't think the, the Rangers fans who have followed the team and again such huge numbers over the course of the over, over the course of the season and have already bought their tickets and made their um, made, made the trip to Dundee already for this one, they shouldn't be penalised and they shouldn't uh, miss out on the game, especially at this stage of the season. We yeah. know the importance of the three points. They they want to be there. They want to play their part and trying to get the team over the line trying to get the team back to the top of the table. So for me, behind closed doors is a complete non-starter. Um, if the venue was to move, that would I think that would be a good thing. Um, as the manager said last night, or in his uh, press of yesterday, sorry, even if you say we'll go and play it in seven days' time, well, what happens when it rains in six days' time? You then end up in exactly the same situation. This is not just a freak set of weather circumstances that's forced one game off. It's happened too often at at Dens Park over the course of the season. So for me, if it can't get on, if the game can't go on this midweek, there is no guarantees that it'll be on next midweek. Um, so I think that's the that was a huge frustration for the manager. Putting it back 24 hours, again, I think it's hugely unfair on Rangers. As as the comment said earlier on, teams already travelled. They, they travelled just after the press conference yesterday. Having a, a whole wasted day in the in the hotel today, that's then eaten into preparation time. It's eaten into time that the yes. manager would have um, on on the training ground, and then changes the recovery schedule. We also get Ross County away on uh, on Sunday as well, so you're then back down the road, travelling on on Saturday to get to Thingwall. I don't think that's fair at all on on Rangers. I think that if it's off off today, I think the most likely situation is next midweek, and um, probably next Wednesday. Also, the Rangers play Sunday. And then Sunday, so the Wednesday would seem yeah. like the most uh, the most obvious day for it. Um, 
but that it's fine picking a date, picking a venue could be the it could be a difficult bit. I know people say just go and play it at Tanadice because that that's the ultimate um, slap in the fa- face for D. So, you know, it, it's been really wet and the weather's really bad up here when 100 yards down the road there's a fact it's perfectly, perfectly playable. So um, I don't think that's a that that would take a lot to turn around. I don't think Dundee would have to want to make that phone call and say, by the way, can we borrow your stadium because ours isn't isn't fit for purpose. You also have to have VR installed there as well. So that, that will take time to get up and running. So um that the the venue for me is harder to sort than, than the date. I think the I say if 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 the news it comes to in, a, in about an hour or so that it's and it's bad news, I think it's fairly certain to say it will be next midweek, which again from Rangers perspective isn't isn't ideal because they would have wanted the whole week heading into the Hearts semi final. This is a side that's going for a treble. It's not as if next midweek is a complete dead rubber for them. Um, so this this whole situation, it's not the fault of Rangers. Certainly not the fault of the Rangers fans. They've been impacted too much already. It's up to Dundee and it's certainly up to the league. I think to be to be stronger here. Um, no no matter if I say if the, if the call off comes in the next hour or so. We really need to see a league be stronger and say this is the situation. This is when it's been played, where it's been played, and if it's not, there then has to be ramifications for it. For the the manager didn't want to get into that situation yesterday, understandably. So it's not his. That's not his role. That's not his influence. Um, but I think we will see bigger calls for that if if the worst comes to the worst today. I think Rangers will be making strong representation to the league to get this situation sorted. But the league they need to show a bit of leadership and be hard on Dundee. It's unacceptable for a for a team to be in this situation time after time after time this season. Um, and as Stuart Kettlewell said uh, at, the, at the weekend after the after the Motherwell game, there's resource being put into a playing squad that's not being put on the pitch. And that's a different situation for Motherwell. Um, so Motherwell were in this situation a few years ago. Fair play to them, put a lot into the a lot of finance into the pitch. Playing surface there is now good. Um, the D's is far from acceptable for a top flight. If a top flight stadium, I, it's not good for fans, not good for players, not good for the broadcasters that are putting a lot of money into this as well. So it has to get has to get sorted. Um, and I say Rangers and, and the Rangers fans, they've been inconvenienced and they've been disrupted far too many times already. Yeah, uh, like you said, the SPFL were quick to uh, comment on the, the record and number of viewers uh, to the, the the old firm game on Sunday, but uh, yeah, the silence is deafening on on this one. They really need to show a bit of leadership, as you see, Chris, uh, and uh, give us an idea of what is going on. Tam Brown quite rightly says, "Does anyone know what the punishment the beats can hand out for this shambles?" Uh, as you said, Chris uh, Clement was asked about that. He says it's between the club's boards and the federation to uh, work out, but there certainly should be repercussions. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Brian Doherty with the point says, "Don't understand why the pitch was covered for the weekend, but not for this game tonight." John Nelms did say. Uh, that the problem areas were covered. Um, so the areas of concern, uh, they were uh, covering those. But uh, yeah, don't expect uh, a bowling green tonight when the uh, Rangers go up there if the game gets the go-ahead. But uh, as I said earlier on, I will keep you updated throughout the course of of the day. Right, folks, that'll do us there. Huge thanks to everyone for interacting with the show as ever. Uh, big uh, big audience on the show this morning, which is uh, terrific. I forgot to uh, mention that our podcast sponsors uh, MPH Boilers. If you're looking for uh, a new boiler, folks, as, if you're, as yours is knackered, then these are the guys to call. They've got some brilliant uh, Viesman boilers on offer at this moment in time. You get a free internet controller as well and there's flexible finance options. Also, the all-important links are in the description below. Uh, lots on the website, as I mentioned, Clement's uh, comments there on uh, certain media pundits and Fabio Silva to check out. There's a predicted teams from myself and Chris over on the YouTube channel. You can uh, watch Kieran Dill and Philip Clement's press conferences and you can uh, watch the press conference reaction if you're a member of the YouTube channel as well. There's also uh, an interview I did yesterday with uh, FC Utrecht podcaster uh, Dustin, who uh, spoke very well on Sam Lammers. They absolutely love Sam over there. Uh, so they're hopeful of uh, getting a deal over the line. Um, so yeah, keep up uh, the form, uh, Mr. Lammers, and I'm sure uh, Rangers will be recouping much of the transfer fee paid out to Atalanta in the summertime. So do go and check that out, folks, as we also pointed to keep you entertained as we build up to hopefully what will be a game this evening. Until then, 